So just quickly, Lydia, do you have time to, to give a, a quick intro to solar biosolarization? Yeah, I do. I have a, I have a, I have a moment. Okay. So, so, so wait, before you go, before you start it, uh, let me cut to the one graphic I could pull up so people know what we're talking about. Is that, is that a reasonable graphic for what we're talking about? Look at those fun words, digestates and mesocosms. <laughs> Six days. See, yes, this is okay. So this is bad. This last image is real helpful. So basically the, the general process and thought that we're talking about here is um, the, the use of different types of um, plastics to cover up um, to cover soil and heat it up to a certain temperature for a certain number of days that basically uh, thermally inactivates uh, weed seeds and pests and disease um, within a certain you know depth of the soil surface and so um, we were chatting about this um, privately uh, one of our other um, IPM friends in the cannabis space had shared a slide from Jim Stapleton's work over at uh, UC Kearney Ag Research. And so basically, you know, this is a, 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 a practice that you see implemented in like strawberry fields. So when you drive past a field and, and um, there are furrows and then in between the furrows, um, there are these sheets of plastic that are just covering like long, long rows. Um, in these big fields, um, essentially the, the purpose and the point is to, like I said, like knock down anything that would be causing a uh, difficulty in managing pests or disease once the actual crop comes up. They, they utilize this type of thing when it comes to managing um, spring mix, you know, like the greens, you know, there's a zero tolerance policy for having weeds in your spring mix crops, right? But you can't go through and hand weed, you know, acres and acres, that's exactly right, right there, um, that you just put up. Uh, you can't go um, hand weed acres of, um, of spring mix. It's just something that's, you know, it's a limiting factor, the number of people that you're gonna have to have do that, you know, the, their capacity to get it right every time, like it's, it's pretty intense. And so what's been going on with the biosolarization is essentially taking the soil solarization topic, you know, the whole background of heating up the soil, to inactivate these these things that you're not wanting in your your system and then the bio part is adding organic material into that heating process and as the organic material decomposes it there are toxic breakdown products that eliminate soil pest organisms um, you know, we're talking about something that's as little as an addition of 5% of something like, uh, they, they tested tomato pumice, white wine, grape pumice, and red wine, grape pumice, uh, saying that the tomato byproducts from the traditional, you know, food ag was really helpful in eliminating some of these plant pathogens that they were concerned about. But, you know, as with everything, it does have limitations on its effectiveness. You know, you wouldn't want to complete the this type of solarization and then move all, all of your soil or till it or you know get it all mixed up because you're only inoculate or you're only really uh, inactivating those first top inches uh, you know six inches ish of um, of topsoil up top and then the kind of the thought process is that the beneficial organisms, you know, earthworms and other, uh, you know, fungi, bacteria that, you know, they're used to a larger range and change in their environment. They're, they're much more like plastic and capable of, of managing environmental stress and change differently than perhaps disease uh, and pest organisms that are going to more similarly need uh, an environment that matches their host plant. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of information that UC Davis, UC Kearney has put up. Um, there's other scholarly papers that had put out, been put out about this. Um, you know, when I worked for BASF, we would put all of our, um, all of our media into this like deep, deep freezer and freeze everything for a, a period of time and then have to take all, all the big bales of material and let them thaw before we use them in the greenhouse um, for pesticide research. And so it kind of works on the polar opposite end is that if you create this like massive environmental change or temperature shock, 
that you can reduce, you know, pathogens and pests and disease. And I bet that that Scott and Eric and Kevin and Sarah have all seen this employed, especially down in Salinas Valley uh, and other places where there's a lot of a lot of crops and a lot of dirt instead of soil. For sure, there's a cannabis company that does like a whole steaming thing actually and and i don't know what they bring in to do it but they tarp everything over and actually inject steam in there hmm. wow this is where i really start to defer to what i learned from dr lane and that like all the problems live in decreased oxygen conditions and all the good things live in the increased oxygen conditions and there's like a gray area in the center and you know i I think what's been missing on the growing community at wide, whether it's big ag or the small cannabis farmer, is that, you know, there's aerobic strategies for dealing with problems. And I think that's something that Dr. Lane has discovered and communicated that hasn't really settled in with the market too much. Um, you know. But uh, this, it still wouldn't, this, this sounds like you're also dealing with weed seeds, which is a, mm -hmm. um, a pretty good strategy for dealing with that. Um, are they doing this in preparation then on these rows for, for doing yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the thought process is that uh, plant soil or the soil solarization can take four to six weeks, you know, at a certain temperature during the hottest part of the year, you have to have, you know, bright sun, really high temperatures for it to be effective. And, and what they're implementing the biosolarization is they're trying to reduce that time and then also reduce the temperature uh, window requirement. And so they're changing something that's like four to six weeks of, of your um, your field being down, you know, not, not yeah. cultivating anything to making it, you know, seven to 10 days and achieving a similar effect uh, without going anaerobic, like Scott mentioned, right? You don't want to like drench your soil and then put a bunch of plastic tarping on it and just hope right. for the best. Right. Like that's not the goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, but so it was just interesting. Peter brought it up. It sounds <laughs> like that by adding, it sounds like what they're saying is by adding plant material, they shorten the duration of what's needed to be effective because they're composting in place essentially so by adding the grapes or the you know any of the agricultural crop residues you're adding organic matter that probably probably gets hotter quicker or something because it's composting i don't know yeah i'm a little unclear okay. how that process is totally mm -hmm. you know layering if out you, in the short if you of chop time. the season up there's no benefit in that either Exactly. Yeah. So, so you must have to do it in a crop rotational form where you're doing grid A and then grid B is the one where you'll do solarization and, and then application of material to, to develop a better tilt. And then, you know, you'll into, into mix it and then next year you would reverse it. So you're, you're taking like, you know, 100,000 square foot and you're only growing on 50,000. And so you do 50,000 this year, 50,000 next year, but this way that solarization would work in the hot part of the summer because how can you cut a chunk of the growing season out and get paid? Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, exactly. It's, that, that's the hard part is that it, it, some of this stuff is just tough for us with, because the benefit outdoor is doing it outdoor and catching the season. Yeah. You, you don't have anything but that window. Maybe, maybe this yeah, is, a, and, and it, sorry, I was going to say, maybe this okay. is a strategy for like, you're seeing a lot of hemp people move into old agricultural grounds. So maybe this is like a before we start strategy or something. Yeah, I got like, a, like yeah. the three year fallow prior to organic. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. As long as yeah. it doesn't create any like yeah. disease, as long as it's, you know, the, the goal and the actual effect of it is to bring it down to something like neutral and you're not actually causing disease. I don't see a problem with it. It seems like it could fit somewhere. Um, you know, as long as I'm always mindful that whatever we do produce as a solution has a, it doesn't linger around for eons of generations and plastics and things like mm -hmm. that as we go forward. If we can come up with solutions that don't, that biodegrade or whatever as they come into the environment. But, um, but it sounds like to me that if you did bring it down to neutral in a strategy like this, you could easily then revive it with a good inoculum, mm -hmm. um, like with the compost and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and this is where like, you know, we spoke about some of the obstacles that, you know, maybe Elaine, Dr. Lane has, but like, this is where I put her as the undisputed world champion. Like, 
Yeah. We, we have yet to run into a facility that had a soil pathogen problem that we couldn't get under control in a reasonable right. amount of time with the same strategies that we use to increase yield. And that, that's where what Dr. Lane has not missed once, you know, um, you know, despite her views on mineral balancing or what she thinks is the correct goal, you know, when we take strategies and cultivation that lead to an aerobic root zone, we don't have those problems at all. Yeah. You know? I mean, I could see it being utilized as a first time strategy to implement in a field. Um, and then as you go forward, so the, the way that, um, in soil ecology, as we deal with weeds, as we move along the ecological succession underground in the microbes. And so that's how we start just selecting for which plants then thrive in the system. But that's a much longer term strategy depending on you know what your base soil is starting out with. So I could see this being something definitely utilized as a start of a system. Um, if your system is a young system, so let's say you're doing greens all the time and it doesn't take much to inoculate it every time and you could do this every time because you're not growing trees that need a very long, you know, growth, ecological, ecological growth time to get that fungal component up. That's a, they have a much lower threshold of, of um, biological um, numbers that they need. So for, for something like greens, I could see that being a, a good strategy. Effective, yeah. yeah. And There's they're the introducing this as a alternative to conventional fumigation, you know, fumigating your Perfect. soil, yeah. which we all yeah, agree yeah. is not an methyl option bromide. for cannabis. Yeah. Yes. yes. Not a good idea. Yeah, yeah methyl bromide. Yeah. Methyl yeah. bromide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how they do organic walnuts because it takes four years before there's nuts. So they yeah. dig out the old tree, methyl bromide the whole plant, a new one. And then in four years, when it produces, it can be deemed organic. Wow. There's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no loophole, though, you know? One of Dang the, shit. Yeah, one, one of the most profound moments in my entire, you know, growing career was I was at a greenhouse in Salinas. And, uh, you know, the owner of the property also is growing strawberries. And they brought in like a flat of clamshells of strawberries. And all the weed, all the white weed people were just devouring down, but like not one of the non-English speaking agricultural workers would go anywhere near those strawberries. And I even kind of was like, you want some? And their face was like, that was a really, that was a really profound moment. Like they've been in the trenches, they know what goes down. And which I think is the beauty of regulated cannabis right now. Like yeah. we're getting a real strong snapshot with, um, major financial losses tied to the things that we regularly do in agriculture yep. um, that affect cat three testing, which I think is really the kind of poetic aspect mm -hmm. of cannabis is so good at bioremediating that it's like cleaning up the agriculture that's next door because of the contamination that's leading to a cat three failure and a loss of investment. So now there's a motivation to look at how toxic our farming is and how far that spreads away from the actual agricultural field. No. He's remediating the cultivators too. It's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.